listeners. This is executive editor Ryan McQuaid here for the Awards Watch podcast, episode 139. Just like weird numbers, but I, yeah, we're at 139, I guess. Joining me today, Eric Anderson. Me? Yeah, Hi, everybody. You. Hello. Hello. Tyler Doster. Hello, everybody. Wow, Tyler. Okay. On a Sunday show. And Sophia Simonello. Hi, everyone. So nice to have this crew. I haven't, we've never done, had all four of us together. This is different. This is this cool. Is a, this is a different pod. Yeah. It's a good one. I think it's mm-hmm. going to be a really good pod. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. poltergeisted my way out of a television so I could be with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the light, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> what are we here to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about uh, a lot of movies and television shows that we've kind of missed over the last couple of weeks, you know, because we were doing uh, Emmy stuff and we were doing Tony stuff. So we really haven't talked about like movies, uh, but Tyler is also here. So we'll still talk a little bit about television and because or any movies that Tyler has seen in between, too, because I know that Tyler's maybe seen one or two. Right, Tyler? Oh, <laughs> I need to watch. I need to watch more movies. I still want to watch. I'll probably watch Cha Cha Real Smooth like tomorrow. That's that's good. That's good. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about Lightyear. Maybe um, we're gonna definitely do our top five Pixar movies. So it'll be nice to hear everybody's opinions on the biggest animated property of all. We'll do some listener questions, and we got a new game that Sophia is excited about. Which yeah. you came back here for. I know. Mm-hmm. I, I took my little hiatus. And for the listeners, I shared before this started that with Ryan, I feel like how I feel when my friends suggest, you know, getting a board game at a bar or having a board game night. I'm like, can we just talk instead? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, it's also too like Sophia was texting me last night. She's like, what's the new game? Give me a hint. And I'm like, no, I'm not giving you any hints. Like, you just I like have to. to pre- she I'm likes sorry. to prepare and it's this is like <laughs> killing her and i'm like i love surprises so let's do it and, <sighs> and everything. it'll be a fun game don't worry and if if you know we don't like it then we don't have to have to play it again we'll just go back to taglines which is your other favorite uh, yeah my you know how dare you mm-hmm. but i did promise that we would have an update on the summer movie draft and i have done the points today and um it's a it's so fun i can't wait for that part it is uh, no i've got them right now i'm doing it right now it is uh so i don't have to wait no no rip the band-aid off go ahead okay so eric's team has 322 points i decided in fairness to take away the rules of negative points counting as two points as opposed to just having a singular one point in the negative because i just thought that was too much and also the gap would be significantly wider for my team we have 1550 points so you are guys are down by a lot sure we we've also really only had one movie came come out yeah two came out this weekend i mean really kind of only one you had jurassic world Oh yeah, Dominion. Yeah. yeah, it's really giving um, Patriots Falcons Super Bowl. If you know what oh, I mean. Yeah, I, n- not for Tyler and, and Eric, yeah, but I understand. I, I understand. <laughs> I don't understand that. <laughs> Wrong podcast audience for that one. Yeah. But <laughs> I got saying, it. I got yeah. it. Yeah, don't don't count us out just yet because we really only have had one real opening. I would say, mm-hmm. um, and we are still waiting on. I would think two of our biggest movies definitely one Mm -hmm. i know that you're not a fan of elvis but a lot of people (laughs) will be and that movie has a lower budget than we originally thought yes much yes yeah much 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 lower thank you australian tax credits yes yes (laughs) you also have those pesky minions that make a shit ton of money so there's there's that and uh and, well, uh, I think I think with Ethan this Hawk, game, right? All I the think, Hawk fans will come out. I think with this thing. game, though, nobody anticipated the level that Top Gun was going to get to. Not even you guys. So no. don't pretend that you didn't. 
No, we we picked uh, that. And on the I other think, side, fourth, on the other on side, side, though, yeah. on the other side, we overestimated Lightyear significantly, and clearly the audience did not agree. And that's most, that's on us. Most Tim Allen fans didn't show up. Yeah, apparently <laughs> all those all those uh, anti wokesters. I know, right? No, I I, I said think no that... to lesbianism. <laughs> I think the film will do fine. It's just the problem is right now it is negative 140 or or negative 114 points for you right now, because it did only have like 86 million this weekend worldwide. So uh, it's a $200 million budget. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. So it'll, it'll get there. It'll at least it'll get, it'll get to even. Yeah. Hopefully it's got some lesbian legs. (laughs) (laughs) And then meanwhile, I mean, we're not done yet because Top Gun's still making money and, uh dr strange lucked is, out. and yeah. uh you guys lucked out with top gun and uh i still got thor love and thunder and nope this will do pretty well i'm, not, I'm just saying is crawdads sing oh yeah that's like a 600 million dollar budget right there yeah they gonna, imported the crawdads when we get them in that boiling water yeah i know <laughs> I, I mean i think you know i could be sad about our team's performance but I really don't care simply because I'm never going to root against Tom Cruise saving the summer box office. What he's done here has actually helped our slate of movies coming up because now audiences are going to be less hesitant to go to movie theaters. That's the truth. Um, Yes, they're seeing his movie, but audiences feel comfortable coming back. Yeah. You can laugh at me all you want, but that is true. So and they might not be coming yeah. out for light year, but they are coming back to theaters. And that's really, really important. And I'm not going to root against Top Gun Maverick. I loved Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick's great. Should have picked it. You know, yeah. Would have been, it would have been. I just don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I Set. like, I'm rooting for it to do well because it is. I know it's going, like it's I said, really to bring well. audiences back, but you know what it's not doing as well as Ryan and it's fourth weekend, mm. James Cameron's avatar. Mm. We'll see. We'll <laughs> He'll see. always have you. That's, that's a different draft and a different scenario that we'll talk about later in this year. And you don't want to count your chickens before they hatch because the fact, what if that sequel doesn't do as well as its first film when we do the fall movie draft? So yeah, I don't know. That I mean, hasn't happened yet. So we'll yeah. see. We'll see. And they also they might they might say, you know what? I went to Top Gun Maverick. I don't need to go back to you know pandemic or Pandora or whatever the hell that thing's called. You know what I mean? So you know, might be, you know, but all I know is is that that's the update. It's a it's a not a, it's not over yet. There's still plenty of time, and there's still plenty of yellow Twinkies. Um, it's sort of like a up, like at the elections, like the the red wave, it's the early know, when, predictions. When 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 the, when, the, when the first numbers come in, but you don't get those mail in ballots yet. It's kind of what I'm feeling right now, right? Yeah, so we're totally going to toss just, those out. Let's just say you know, we're at the beginning of this. Totally going to we'll toss. Just those see out. how it yeah. shakes out in the end with the popular mm-hmm. vote. Yeah. I also didn't see this in the rules, but what is our end date? It is um, our end date is August, the end of August. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right, August thirty first, because we were kind of talking about that mm-hmm. uh, that George Miller flop. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, oh, and, that's and right. nobody picked. Right. And also, we didn't. I didn't. We didn't at the time of predicting. We didn't uh, know what its budget fully was at the time. So. Yeah, why nobody like clearly, gave it either as a bomb or anything. If, it, if its budget was fifty dollars, you know, it would still be a flop. Well, I'm sorry, a fifty dollars. I love George you know, Miller, but it just looks. It's fifty dollars amongst here for all of us to go see it. I don't maybe. I yeah, that movie's not going to do well, but it could be good. I don't know. But I'm going to love it because it looks. Yeah, because it, it looks bonkers and fun. But yeah, no. Um, Sophia is right though. We haven't had our bomb pick come out yet. Um, and the Elvis, it could, it could be big international. I, I know a lot of people that did walk out of my screening were not like me. They really did love it. So but the runtime, I think is the concern on that one. It's two hours and like 40 minutes. So that's a, that's a long movie. The it's, only a long concern, movie. it's a long the movie. Only I'm just concerned saying about that is the number of, of, you know, times it can run in a day, but yeah. that won't yeah. matter. Yeah. 
That's that won't exactly what I said, only in a different way. Or congratulations, in a anyway. much better way. Much yeah, better. much better for sure. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, biased way. If you're wondering about the summer movie draft, that's your update. We will see how it all plays out at the end of August, right before Eric and I go to Telluride, and uh, that'll be that'll be fun. Yeah. So, well, we haven't done um, really like a normal. I guess episode over the last couple of weeks, we talked about, like I said, the Tonys last week with Nicole and Dan, and they're taking their time off. Uh, Nicole's with her new puppy. Dan's seeing probably whatever's left of the musicals. And he's I, also at Tribeca, if I'm not mistaken too. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, yes. And uh, Josh is coming back from vacation and, and Kevin's doing all that stuff. So that's why we are all here. And we're going to talk about some movies that have come out, some movies that we've seen recently. They could be newer. They can be, uh, they can be, uh, you know, some classics that we're, we've checked off our blind spots or anything over the last couple of weeks. Um, I know that uh, Tyler's been talking about or seeing some new uh, television shows that he's been talking about with me, so he can talk about that as well. But I will go with Sophia first. Sophia, are there any films recently that you've seen that you would love to talk about on the show? Maybe like a like a have you seen Jurassic World? Have you seen Lightyear? Have you seen any of those? So I haven't been helping my team much. I will reveal <laughs> because I, I did not go see Jurassic World Dominion. Wow. I passed on that, um, but I did see Lightyear. So okay. I'm happy to talk about that now or we can save it for when we do the Pixar conversation. Um, but yeah, I saw Lightyear and I was underwhelmed a bit by it. I think just because I've been comparing it and I think this is natural to do comparing it to other Pixar movies. And it just didn't have that magic that hits your heart with the right type of Pixar movie, I think. Um, And when we get to our top fives, I can definitely talk about the movies that made me feel that way. Lightyear was unfortunately not one of them. I definitely think it has its merits, but it's one that I would recommend to children and to families. It doesn't hit that adult market, I think, like some of the more philosophical ones do like even inside out, which I think works really well for both audiences. My favorite, favorite thing that I've seen recently though, I at Tribeca had just one of the greatest experiences I think you can have as a movie fan. I saw the 4k brand new run of heat Michael Mann's film and I mean, it was just glorious. It was beautiful. The sound work was fabulous. And I appreciated it in a way that I never had before. Watching Heat growing up, it was on TNT. It wasn't in a movie theater, like that movie theater too. It's this gorgeous um, theater called United Palace um, up in Washington Heights. It was just stunning, but even more than the movie, I got to see Al Pacino and Robert De Niro in real life for a Q&A. And Oh my God. I mean, just legends. De Niro is exactly how you would imagine. He's very quiet. He's incredibly serious. He answers questions sometimes in very short sentences, sometimes one word answers. Pacino is sprightly and loquacious for an 82 year old. I heard that the Shrek phone case is real. (laughs) And he just, I mean, he was just like getting up and telling stories and he was very, very into it. And it was just honestly, such a great joy to be able to see these living legends, because of course, in the back of your mind, it's like, this could be a once in a lifetime thing, um, to see these guys in person. So it was just, I mean, it was amazing. It's one of my favorite, favorite movie experiences I've ever had in my life. And Michael Mann was also there too, the director. He wasn't, he was supposed to be, um, but he actually was stuck in Italy because he tested positive for COVID. So he's (sighs) shooting his new movie there, which is something we should all be very excited for, right? New Michael Mann movie coming. Yes. I believe it's the Ferrari film with Adam driver. Um, So he's working on that right now, which of course I'm thrilled about, but yeah, I was sad to not see him there, but He recorded a little message before for us about how excited he was that we were there. And I do have to say that, of course, a bunch of outlets ran with Pacino saying Timothy Chalamet should play him in some sort of prequel. And I have to say that that is just not how it went down. It was very much in jest. And 
almost like he was sort of trolling the audience. Like he understands where Hollywood is right now. And he was like, great actor, beautiful. Like, you know, just kind of in jest. And then someone brought up Harry Styles and the entire audience booed. So it was a very lively crowd. I'll say that they were shouting out quotes from the movie at him. It was something else. A lot of Sudeikis fans there. All right. Interesting. Um, <laughs> it, it sounds like a uh, uh, this is more of a comment than a question crowd. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yep. 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 Well, but that sounds I, amazing. Yeah, and I am yeah. jealous as fuck. It was that's, incredible. That's just that's that's what yeah, I just I just want the steel book because the steel book uh, cover came out this past week, too. And I saw that and I was I just want that let alone that yeah. experience. I mean, that's, that's incredible. Ugh. And they were giving out to the first 500 people. They were giving out heat to like advanced readers oh, editions book? of the book. So I got I one of those, of course, because I was early. So yeah, all around great experience. Yeah. Thank you, Tribeca. Yeah. I'm not jealous of you that's amazing. at all, at all, but no, that's great. That's great. Um, Eric, what have you been watching recently? Any, any movies or anything in particular that, that you uh, or any television shows or anything that you I mean, lots of, recommend? Lots of TV and stuff. and stuff. And but yeah, Lightyear was honestly the last movie I saw. I mm-hmm. had to skip my Jurassic World. Uh, oh, no. Reading. Now you'll just have yeah. to go to the theater and pay for it and help well, your team. No, I'll just watch it on Peacock or whatever. Wow. Not really helping out the cause. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. Sorry. I also did not help. But, you know, it wouldn't anyway, because it would have been a press training. Yeah, that's um, fair. That's the only way so I was going to watch it, to be honest with you. I, I sort of had the same feelings that Sophia did. It was underwhelming, but not not quite in the same way, because I thought it did have incredible heart and great ambition, but only with um, Uzu Aduba and Kiki Palmer's characters, which was a pretty big deal for the Pixar universe. Um, I know it was a big deal for a lot of black audiences that really, really, really loved them. And they were fantastic. What was missing was the central character's heart. I mean, I love Chris Evans, but his voice work was extremely underwhelming to say the least, but just the conceit of the film with that opening title card was a huge mistake of, you know, this is the movie that Andy saw in 1995 that inspired, you know, his love of Buzz Lightyear. Bullshit. Because that's not a movie from 95, not just the the visuals, but just the content. It's, it's bullshit. So it was a really bad idea to, to begin it like that, because then you, that's your trajectory for, for the movie. But yeah, I mean, just, Buzz as a character is, I don't know. It, it didn't make sense in the Toy Story universe. It just didn't at all. And maybe we're kind of done with origin stories. Maybe we really don't need them very much anymore. Can we be done with them, please? Yeah. I'm, I'm over it, really. Yeah. I just, and I think audiences kind of are too. I mean, just get back to these original stories. Mm. Even a, even a sequel that might be better than the original. Top Gun just showed that, that you can do mm-hmm. that really, really well. There's mm-hmm. no need to go back in the well and go backwards into the well. It, yeah. feels like, it feels like some of that, I don't know. It makes me feel, I wouldn't call them lazy, but that's how it feels to me when they're not producing new content and just going back to these origin stories that like you guys said no one really cares about in this in this age we just have so much original content that why would we want to go back to something just to see its origins Mm -hmm. socks was amazing though like one of the best characters like ever i loved socks socks was Mm -hmm. great there should be a cat in every movie yeah and that would have been the toy that he would have had where's where's socks where's that toy (laughs) I mean, Andy got a dog, so he's probably not a cat person. Rude. Absolutely. I'm just rude. telling you the truth. It's just rude. telling you the truth. Um, I saw I saw Lightyear and um I liked it. I was I was surprised. Um I wrote the review up on the website and I gave it a nice old B. And I think that we're in a good little era right now of Pixar, in my opinion, where after the massive miscalculation of something like soul 
Um, I think that them going back to their roots and doing small, simple little films like Luca and Turning Red and this are much more something in my wheelhouse and showing that they are better when they aren't talking about or trying to the main concept is not the thing that drives it rather than the characters. And I think that I like the film. I'm, I understand Eric, what you said and Sophia and what a lot of people seem to be uh, talking about online uh, about like the sort of the nitpicky qualities, I think about the film uh, in terms of the title card and where this is in the toy story universe. And uh, you know, the, the, you know, how is this a movie made in like what 1995 and and if you're if this is when you know, like all the you know the yarn you can try to connect this all to and in, in those title cards and i get that but as a film i just thought it was really touching and uh i didn't cry or anything i don't i don't think it has like a like punch you in the in the gut sort of emotional moment but i thought it was it was quite moving and I thought the animation was really good, and I, I socks is extraordinary. Like what what a, a a character to introduce and make me like as a non cat person like to to have that be like the character one of the characters of the year period uh, was really was really great. And yeah, I just thought it was real earnest and um, like a like a movie. I think right now that that we need to show kids like you know about um you know not being stubborn and growth and maturity and things of that nature and those are themes that are found within the toy story franchise so it does have those sort of uh context within themes i think that really work well for it um but yeah um i get all the other stuff i was on a twitter space the other day for um the the hca and everyone was going back and forth and i i was like i get it i understand um but I still liked it, I, you know, wasn't Jurassic World it was, Dominion. You know, I thought it was funny that, that we had, you know, a young buzz and an old buzz, just like young Captain America and old Captain America. Yeah, <laughs> that was a little funny. It did. I was like, oh, that look, it's Joe Biden again. You know what I mean? So, yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, a little, a little bit, a little bit. bit. So uh, I saw Jurassic World Dominion. We talked about that, I think, a couple of weeks ago or whatever. It's not very good. It's. I wrote that review on the site. Uh, it was a bad, bad movie. Um, but yet, I mean, I was in a, a screening full of what do you call um, a general screening, Eric? What do, you, what do you call them? Well, what it's what it's officially called is a filled screening. Mm-hmm. And what do you um, call them? Normies. It there you go. Pressed, it was pressed with with normal with, people. With normal. Yeah. And I, the... I just I don't fuck with that. I just don't. <laughs> Yeah, no. I'll do one or the other. I love, you know, my press screenings and I just see the thing and it's, you know, with like 10 people and it's great. Uh, but then I then I love going to super uh, a regular screening and seeing it with a packed audience and yeah. and feeling everybody there. But it's just it's a it's, it's a different experience yeah. and a different reason for for going. I will say that, like, people were lined up out the door. For Jurassic World Dominion to get in there, I was like, Jesus Christ! Christians. The last two movies are <laughs> are terrible. Um, but yet yeah, they were just they were eating it up, and it was it was kind of saddening. Um, but it's, uh, around that same time, I saw Cronenberg's new film Crimes of the Future. Has anybody seen that? Yes. Yes. I, love I have it. to I wait it. for my dad to see it. All right, oh, okay. this weekend. I love it, but I love Kristen Stewart. <laughs> it's pretty boring for a Cronenberg. There's I liked nothing, it. There's nothing very unexpected from it's him. Kinda, you know, but she's great. Whatever the fuck she is doing in that, I was Lisa absolutely was great. here for. I like Leia Sadu in the film. I thought she was really good. And um, uh-huh. Vigo was Vigo. You know what I mean? It was like, Maybe Vigo Lettinson is what we need. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, little bit less. A little bit All right. less. All right. Okay. Yeah. You, it's Father's Day. I can make dad jokes. Yeah, that is true. That is true. And then... um. Movie comes out next week, but I did see Elvis. Eric saw Elvis. Oh God, that's right. I saw Elvis. I yeah, we can talk about it. Like, forget <laughs> about that I too, loved. didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we're allowed oh. to talk about it. See, I am just. I don't know. You're I, all over the I, place. My memory is so bad. Yep. I loved 
Elvis. <sighs> it's this. It's the second baziest film ever. I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Yeah, I think <sighs> Great Gatsby is the baziest yeah, of yeah. all the Baz Luhrmann films. That movie is that's his best. Is like you think that's know. his best, Ryan? Mm-hmm. Oh no. Well, yeah. are, are you are you surprised, Sophia? You surprised? No, I can't, I can't be. Surprised. I can't be surprised. Okay, yeah. Wow. I think that okay. this is best. Yeah. yeah. No, I I am a huge I'm a huge fan. It's mostly because of the source material, not because for of... a lot of reasons, and then there are plenty of reasons to um, discount it and and be a little frustrated with it. And they're the they're the exact things that I was expecting to, and that's basically the lip service that it provides to. Uh, uh, blues artists that he was inspired by. There's a lot of it in there, but mm-hmm. it's, I don't know. It it felt kind of cheap, but at the same time, it's, it, it just kind of is. It's, it is that because it, you know, he benefited from being the, the right white guy at the right white time and period. But they kind of Forrest Gump him through things like no MLK, shit. like shooting, oh, and then no like all the, oh yeah, shit. then all of a sudden he's like watching it, and he's like, oh man, MLK, he was like the voice of a Dr. generation, Doctor King. And I'm just like, yeah, hold like, on, hold on, come on, calm it's, down, come, Elvis, calm yeah. down. And that happens like three times, and yeah. it was just like, Kennedy. you didn't need to do that. Yeah. You didn't need to do that. Yeah. Mahalia Jackson. I mean, it just kind of keeps like happening. And I'm like, it it's feels just... like you're making, you're trying to excuse and make up for, you know, robbing an entire style of music. <sighs> this movie, this, come on, Eric, this movie's bad. Like, no, it's just a bad no, movie. It's, it's still just... a great movie. That is oh. very bad. That's and the I'm whole not... movie. It, That's I'm the like... whole movie. <sighs> I'm talk. I'm talking about the production. I'm talking about Austin Butler. He's every good. Every bit of it. He is good. Austin Butler is phenomenal. The problem is Tom Hanks and it being centered around his perspective the entire time. Well, he's he is the entryway to it. It's like Citizen the entry Kane, and the closing. It's not really about Citizen Kane. Um, no, he's the narrator. He's he opens it. He introduces it. But like that whole opening. Which oh, was, God, it's awful. No, it's like the best part because no. it's like the it's like the opening of Romeo and Juliet. It's absolutely flawless. It's oh. incredible. It's so manic. And I'm like, let's go. I want two hours and 40 minutes of this no. like meth, like injected right into it. <laughs> it's just it, it, the movie. I look, I get that. That is his thing. Over stylized. Just throw everything. No one told him no. Like, you know, we get mad at a lot of other directors and no one tells Baz Luhrmann no, it seems like. And within the first 10 minutes, I'm like, okay, this movie is exactly what I thought it was going to be. And it doesn't even stop. But then it just continues to be exactly what Walk Hard literally criticized verbatim. There, It's like if you watch that movie, if you watch Walk Hard before you see Elvis for baiting plot point by plot point by plot point it is literally that there's the whole stuff about him being you know there on the on like you know uh, what is it like the country stage and the stuff with like his mom and uh with his like his brother and uh and i Cody mean Smith i was literally McPhee was really funny yeah Cody oh my God, i'm so excited for him he yeah, was great he should for two be, minutes he, yeah, he should, he he should be Woody in the in the oh live action uh, <laughs> Toy Story origin story of Woody. Straight up, full stop, end of story. Oh. If, movie, Woody, yeah. if Woody was a demon twink. We don't how know was, that. How was Woody not a demon twink? I mean, Pixar With can rewrite jeans. anything. <laughs> he, he, with those crispy <laughs> jeans. Yeah, are you kidding me? Yeah. And with oh that God. old, like, you know, coal miner guy, that was totally oh God. like a relationship oh. that needs to be explored in a totally different movie I'm anyway anyway the movie is just it's the most stereotypical generic biopic ever assembled every single thing that we criticize all these other biopics for for being 
just bland and unimaginative and not being able to read to anything within the template is exact. I mean, if you think this movie is good, then you must have liked Bohemian Rhapsody because oh, they are very much on the same you, level. The fuck only, you. Fuck you. It's absolutely. the same. No, same is, damn Wikipedia article not. movie. Only it's oh like God. 40 minutes longer. It's the like one. literally the opposite of that. It's the opposite. <laughs> no way. No way. Mm-mm. No. Sorry, ma'am. No. It's I, the only thing saving it is Austin Butler's commitment because that boy is is going for it, but he is bogged down by just a terrible pace, supporting actors that can't do anything, a bland script. That is the just so, oh, it's so frustrating. Tom Hanks is giving him nothing. You might as well have just acted opposite of volleyball, Austin Butler, because you didn't you didn't get to act with Tom Hanks in this movie. It's no, it's no. Bad. I mean, Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is like Cloud Atlas, Tom Hanks. And no, strange, he's, strangely enough, he isn't. He's as bad. bad as the trailer seems no he's, worse. he's not it's <laughs> his makeup is is pretty bad um oh. especially with how many close-ups there are uh but i didn't i obviously hate him as a, as a character but i didn't hate the performance the way that oh, I you were about to say to i obviously hate tom hanks uh no, you know I uh, hanks. That you were literally but about no it's Yes, it absolutely follows a color by numbers template for a musical biopic. The difference between this or Bohemian Rhapsody or anything else is that even though the beats are the same, the song in between is completely different. And that's why it's good. But Baz Luhrmann taking a paint by numbers biopic is the only way that a paint by numbers version would be watchable. And it's oh. extremely watchable. It'll be it'll be fascinating to see what everybody else thinks. But I just uh, and there's a combination of Elvis singing the songs, Austin Butler singing the songs, and then all of the covers that are happening in the movie. Oh, those covers! Like, are you kidding oh, me? That's God. like one of the best parts. No, it's it's, just, it's, it's fucking it's, incredible. It's no, bad. it's oh my it's God, just, Ryan! It's just, no. I'm really excited to see this now. Just yeah. to see where I fall. Where you fall. I know yeah. exactly where you're going to fall. Yeah, you're going to fall right <laughs> in the middle. Yeah. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. It's bad. It's yeah. fantastic. No. No. Loved it. I will I will say this, though. I, I could see it making a ton of money because it could lie to people in thinking that it's good and in and, and the marketing and everything. And people just be like, sucker it into another one of these biopics that doesn't reinvent anything and doesn't have really anything new to say or new to do. I mean, like how many times in these biopics that I have to see Kennedy's assassination and, and, you know, and all these other same historical events at the same time and how they affect them and how the empty calories of, of what he's doing in that special and everything that all it's, it's all just so. And the recreation of the 1968 special is fantastic and long. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Know, it's it's oh got good the, the Christmas sweater. Oh. <laughs> the oh sweater. Yeah. Anyway, oh, that. it's um it's a movie. It exists, and it'll be out next week. Doesn't um, Minions come out the same weekend or or Black July Phone? First, the week after Black Phone comes out. Black right? Phone is next week. Go yeah, go also. see that. I haven't even seen it, but just go see Black Phone. You'll you'll have a go see time. Elvis. We'll go see both because they need the help. Um, wow. Just saying, it's wow. the truth. It'll do well internationally, probably. I think that movie. I'm not but yeah, doubt Elvis's fans. Elvis mm-hmm. has a massive fan base. Graceland gets like 10 million visitors a year. Hopefully, the movie does too. Yeah, it's just the truth. What? I'm just saying. Nothing. Nothing. Go. And yeah, I do agree with you, Eric. The the racial politics of the movie are. are I'm I'm not denying for a yeah, moment that no, they I are really badly done but kelvin harrison jr and he was yeah great. i would watch a bb he's King great in everything bit. yeah oh his yeah voice, his voice in that is really different than we we're used to from him wish he got and, to sing though in the film he's great that would have been nice we didn't get yeah. to hear that yeah so anyway um what else tyler what have you been watching lately 
So I, this will probably come as a surprise to no one, but I haven't seen any movies lately. It's probably been a month or two mm. since I've watched a movie. Was it Doctor uh, Strange was the last movie you saw in theaters? Yes, I saw Doctor Strange in theaters. Um, that way was to help, Way that to was help out the team. Yeah. yeah. Way to help out the team. <laughs> but I have been watching a lot of television. Um, some I can't really talk about, like Issa Rae's rap shit. I will say... The only thing I will say is that you're, if you're a fan of Issa Rae, be on the lookout for that. And it comes to HBO Max next month. Um, I just got done this weekend watching Only Murders in the Building season two, which by the time this comes out, my review for that show will come out. So it will be okay to talk about that one. Um, it's very funny. It's very self-referential, which is something I've discussed with Eric. It has a lot of jokes in the first episode. And I want to say the next couple where they're describing, you know, the second season of their podcast, but it's very meta and it also serves as descriptions for the show. Um, the entire cast is so good in it. The main trio of Martin Short, Steve Martin and Selena Gomez are all so good. Um, and the, all the guest stars that they have, I think it's okay to talk about because they're in the trailer. Um, but Amy Schumer is in it and she plays a version of herself and she's actually tolerable. Um, Cara Delevingne is also in it. And I didn't say this in my review, but you know, you don't really think when you think of Cara Delevingne, you don't think, wow, what an actor, but she actually is fine. (laughs) She does some career best work in this, I think, which, you know, I don't think she's listening to this, but it's not a very high bar to match. Um, Cara Delevingne's listen- career best work is turning women into lesbians. Okay, <laughs> um, that that's her career best work, and she yeah. is and she is fantastic in it. Yeah, <laughs> she's also fantastic at buying sex swings. Swings, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Learning so um, much about Cara Delevingne today on the show. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> You, you might know her from her wonderful performance in Suicide Squad. Um, oh, Enchantress, right? Yeah, she's the mean? Enchantress. She's great. Yeah. Oh, she's great. I love yeah. Shady Tyler. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I've also been watching the new reboot of Queer as Folk, uh, which I have really been enjoying. Um, it's super gay. It's super horny. I would hope so. It, It's also, you know, it's kind of intense at times based on what happens in the first episode, which is in the trailer. There is a shooting, um, very Pulse nightclub-like. So it can be a little much to watch that first episode and keep going, but they don't actually show the shooting for anyone listening. So that make make it a little bit more palatable for you and easier to watch. Um, But yeah, I've been loving it. Um, Got some of my faves on there, like Ryan O'Connell, Johnny Sibili, Sibili, one of those. Um, but they're all so good. Um, I love it. There are disabled queer characters who are not used for some si- sort of weird arc of inspiration or anything like that. They just are. Um, and they're horny too. So that makes it better. Um, and then I also, I watch a lot of TV. So I do a lot of catching up sometimes too. So I've also been getting into Grace and Frankie um i've watched the first three seasons of that i'm trucking through it between all my other tv watching because as you can imagine watching a lot of tv especially this year you can get really bogged down with the intensity of some of these shows yeah. so it's nice to have it's nice to have a laugh with jane fonda and lily tomlin when i'm done watching other things that make me cry yeah and that's uh, intensity is so good in, in that and the intensity is just on barry alone which is supposed to be right crazy. right <laughs> Yeah, so it's nice that you're watching a comic. No, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Has anybody else been watching anything that they like to highlight real quick before we move on? That's those are a lot of great TV recommendations and everything. Any Sophia, you've been watching TV? Yeah, very quickly. I mean, it's sort of it should be considered a movie, but for the Emmys, it will qualify. Um, good luck to you, Leo Grand. Mm. Emma Thompson in this movie is so good, unbelievable. My favorite performance by any actor all year. You have to watch this movie. It is on Hulu right now. It's just a delight. I can't get over and like, I can't get enough about what it says about vulnerability and intimacy and aging and Emma Thompson. She just brings everything to life. It's amazing. Perfect. It's beyond. I've seen it three times. I have cried at that final shot every single time. It is it is a masterwork 
from her in a mm-hmm. career that has been just kind of nothing but I it is it fucking extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. I, rem- I remember watching him back at Sundance. It was the capper to my day. I watched After Yang in the morning, then Fire of Love, fresh. Ugh. And then I watched and then I watched this and I was blown away by these two performances in this film. Um, Dylan, uh, what's his last name? Uh, Daryl McCormick. Daryl McCormick. Sorry. Sorry. Um, oh, but uh, but oh, yes, yes. But oh, she but God. Emma Thompson is extraordinary in the film. And I'm so pissed that it's part of this searchlight Hulu thing where she can't make an Oscar campaign for this because this is, and I know hyperbole is the name of the game for a lot of people in headlines and stuff, but this truly is one of the best performances of her career. And that's saying a lot because she's, a Tuesday, I'm an Oscar winner and a legend and the best interview on the planet. If you can get her, um, <laughs> it just seems like it. And so, yeah, I, I agree with you, Sophia. It's it's wonderful. It's it's nothing more than just two people in a room talking about the intimacies and the eccentricities of sex. I think it's a very sex positive film, uh, how it speaks to sex workers and that profession and everything right now. It's very vital and very important too. Um, and also just about aging and, and what um, someone's body and how they feel in terms of being sexy is it's, it's just a really well-written movie and two great performances. And yeah. Oh, also the, out this weekend too, another streamer, I guess you could say is cha-cha real smooth, um, which is another Sundance film, two Sundance films coming out this week. Um, it's Apple's big play. Um, I know that I've said this on other shows and I'm not trying to say this as a negative, it's like it's like the coda. They picked it up at Sundance and they bought it and they put it out in the middle of the, the summer. I'm not saying it's like the award from an award standpoint. I'm just saying like that's the model in which you buy a film like that. It's like it's a crowd pleaser. It's a it's a very sweet, moving little film. And, and they put it on the streaming platform and, um, you know, written, directed and starring Cooper Rafe and, and Dakota Johnson. And they are fantastic. Um I wrote the review back at Sundance about it. I gave it a good old fashioned A. I stand by you that. Gave it I re- an A plus, I think. I gave it an A. I did not give it an A plus. Um, you just want me to give something an A plus, but I did, but I don't give A pluses. And um, I think A pluses are for classics or things you can see in five years. Um, but uh, I interviewed Cooper Rafe recently. Very, very, very uh, nice guy. And um, that interview is up on the website. And I think every, uh, I know Tyler hasn't seen it. He said he was going to catch up with it, but uh, Sophia's seen it. Eric's seen it. Um, you guys got thoughts on it? Would you recommend people catch it this week or anything? Yeah, I would recommend it. I have to say though, it did not work for me on rewatch. Okay. I found the, I found Cooper Rafe's character sort of grading and the movie itself a bit cloying and It sort of feels like one of those like male fantasy Sundance movies from the early 2000s to me. Mm -hmm. And that is my, my take on it at the moment, but I know this will be one of those follow up to Coda from Apple. (laughs) (laughs) Eric. Yeah. There you go. What? Do you, you know how I feel about Apple and Coda. Yeah. I I know we all, I'm just teasing and dragging. (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I like Chacha a lot. I thought it was really fun, but yes, it's it it definitely feels like weirdly enough a movie that is a product of the time that it's supposed to be taking place in a weird yeah. kind of way. It yeah. feels like two thousand, but yeah. not in not in an homage way because it's that's not really what it is. I don't know how to how to how to say it, but it, you're you're right. It feels like a like a Sundance 2000 instead of Sundance 2022. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, but for it's sure. cute and it's, I, I think everybody, it's really sweet. Vanessa Burkhart, I think it's oh, she's great. Oh, so good. She has the her. best performance in the movie, I actually think. Yeah, and her casting is great. It's it's uh, important casting. Yeah, and um, uh, I do think Dakota Johnson is fantastic. It's one of the best I performances. Think always, for her. I think she's always fantastic. She's always fantastic, I, though. Mm-hmm. People I need to stop her. sleeping on Dakota. She's fantastic in everything. Hey, whoa! Was that was that message specifically for Ellen DeGeneres? 
Yep. <laughs> She's right behind hey, Ellen at all times. She ended Ellen's career, so I will thank God ever right? be thankful to Dakota yeah. Johnson. I'll just do it to Jimmy Fallon. Anyway, um, what? What? Let's talk about it. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't hate it. I know you wouldn't. Uh, none of us would. Um, we lost Corden. We lost Ellen. Just you know, Fallon, and then we'll be. Oh, we're so close. We're so close. Um, but anyway, uh, no, it, I, I've seen the film twice. I saw it back here at home Sundance, and then I was able to see it at the premiere uh, at South by Southwest. And um, it worked, it worked both times for me. Um, and it worked really well with the crowd too. So um, it'd be interesting to see like how it does in its limited run or whatever in theaters. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it, I thought it was a, a cute film. I understand exactly what you're saying, Sophia, because a lot of people have been saying that as well, too, about like the is it too cute? Is it is it's hard too much on its sleeve? Is the character that he's playing graining and everything? I get all that. For me, it worked. Um, and I think just the I think it's just a, like an earnest film. Like, I, you know, I, I haven't really thought much more about like, you know, if this is a, you know, one of those Garden State sort of situations where like that's a movie that hasn't really aged well, particularly at all. Um, which I watched for the first time last week. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch it when it came out. I Mm -hmm. just, the only thing that I knew about it was how amazing the soundtrack was. Yeah. And let me tell you, that's the only amazing thing about the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) like it could be a situation where in a, in a couple of months or a year or so, like it doesn't age well, but you know, I, I will say that the film, this film from Cooper Rafe worked a hell of a lot more than his last film for me. And so I think that that's also a place where I was coming from too, where shit house, I was more mixed and reserved. And I got, I think a lot of the criticisms that people are saying about this is what you can say about that film. And, uh, but, uh, but yeah, go check out uh, that that's on Apple plus and also go check out the interview on the website. All right. Anybody else, any last second things, Eric? No, no, Tyler. No. Okay. I'll say, I do have one more. Um, I right. forgot to mention. I did watch. Um, we will have an interview coming up by the time this is released as well. But I've recently watched all ten episodes of a new animated series called Dead End Paranormal Park. Um, it's perfect for adults. It's perfect for children. It's uh, the creator. You know, said that representation isn't just a part of the show. It's part of the structure and bones of the show. Um, so for anyone with kids, anyone who enjoys animated stuff, it has a young trans Jewish teen as its protagonist and it's very fun. All right. Awesome. Go check that out when, and what's, what's it on, on Netflix? It's on Netflix. Okay. All right. Cool. 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 All right. Top five Pixar movies. I asked everybody to do this because of the fact that it's our first Pixar release <laughs> since uh, the uh, inception of this show. So um wow yeah and so well, that was my inception sound sorry oh wow all right calm down Hans zimmer all right anyway we are gonna go and do our top fives we'll, we'll do it in the sort we'll do sophia then tyler then eric then myself and we'll do that so um if somebody does name a film we can talk about it all there together so then we don't have to do it like four or five times uh depending on where it is so Sophia what is your number five Pixar and what is your also your relationship with Pixar as a entity like I mean obviously we've all grown up with it Eric was around during the inception of it and everything but um, what does Pixar mean to you Sophia yeah so I grew up loving Pixar I think first I very much pre-Pixar was very into the old school Disney hand-drawn animation, all of those movies I really loved. I loved 101 Dalmatians in particular, but then moving into Pixar, I remember going to see Toy Story. I remember going to see Finding Nemo and just that wonder that was there and how different they felt. Not only was the animation different and how it looked, but the stories they were telling really hit at your heart. I felt that they were getting into these deeper questions. Like even as a kid, that was something I could appreciate. And I think a lot of times creators think that children want childish things in their 
TV, in their movies, in their books, but they really don't like they, they like scary things too. They like things that are a bit deeper. And Pixar was one of those places. I think these, these movies where I got that. And I do also remember my parents at the time saying like, these are good movies for us. Like they could also tolerate the movies that I was watching at the time. So I think that's really where my relationship with Pixar started. Now, I mean, I have to say, like, I'm not running to the theaters when a new Pixar movie comes out. I do tend to. It's important. Them. Lightyear. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I went to see Lightyear on oh, time. Yeah. 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 I did yeah. my, I prepared. Like, yeah. like I told yeah. you, I love to prepare, yeah. but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't run to them as much as I used to, but I, I'm always interested in what they're putting out because I think every movie has something important to say. Yeah. No, for sure. So what is your number five? My number five is Toy Story 3. All right. This movie came out at a really pivotal time for me. I was about to go to college. It was that summer and it just hit all of the feels. I think not only is this movie about growing up and leaving home, this movie is about life and death in a way that is easier to grasp than something like soul which I think you really have to like be invested in where that's going philosophically from the beginning. This is something that really gets there. And I mean, we all know that scene when we think those toys are all about to die. That's that can be really traumatic, but it really does. I think make you think about change and moving on and like what your life is all about. So I think it's the perfect way to wrap up a trilogy. I do not think we need Toy Story 4 at all. I think it should have just stopped right there. But yeah, Toy Story 3 is my number five. Okay. All right. That's actually my number six. And so I won't talk about it. So uh, okay, I dig that. Yeah. Tyler, Eric, do you have Toy Story 3 anywhere on your list? I don't, but I love Sophia's reasoning for it because... I still have. You remember when you went to college? No, I oh, okay. still have three of my. Well, they were called binkies. My my my, like stuffed animal toys, dolls, from when I was, like four, five, and six years old. I still have mm. all three of them, and they mean an enormous amount to me. Yeah. So I totally understand <laughs> that that feeling of potentially losing them yeah i i i was about to go to college myself at the same time too sophia and i remember uh i was at a a, i was working at a summer camp and we all 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 the guys just went to see toy story 3 and it was like almost like an entire row of us and we were all by the end of that movie just a puddle all of us because we were all about to go to college we were all about to experience exactly what Andy felt. And it was also like, kind of like saying goodbye to your childhood, even though I don't agree with you. I do really like toy story four a lot. And I ugly cried a lot during that movie. Um, I still think that toy story three is, is fantastic and everything. And yeah, that's a good number five, Tyler. What's your number five. My number five is a film that I've seen. I remember watching all the time. I watched it even at my doctor's office, my pediatrician's office. They were always playing it. Um, my number five is A Bug's Life. Wow. Okay. Um, I love A Bug's Life. I have seen it more recently as well. So it's the themes are were not lost on me last time I watched it like they were when I was a child, obviously. Um, but when I was a kid, I just thought bugs were so interesting and I was a weird little kid. And so that movie was always made me feel less weird, I guess. So that's why I really like that one. Tyler, what are your thoughts on ants? I hate ants. (laughs) Okay. Good. Ants actually kind of creep me out as a child. Yeah. It's really weird animation. Eric, since by your excitement, since by your excitement, it seems like a bug's life might be on your list. It's my number five, too. There you go. I feel I'm so glad Tyler said that because I always feel like in a Bugs Life apologist. I, <laughs> I think it is. I think it is wonderful and funny and gorgeously animated. And it's a lot of the things that I have on my list are I think Pixar splits itself between kind of two different worlds and that's humans 
uh, and, you know, emotions of humans and, and non-human characters. And this is, spoiler alert, I th think one of, well, one of only two, you know, non-human stories that, that they tell that I just absolutely loved. And it is funny that, you know, that and Ants came out at the same time, uh, the, the, the deep impact Armageddon of it all. Mm -hmm. And the other movie is very kind of crudely drawn and feels... Yeah. That movie does like not age well. Something else mm. entirely, mm -mm. Um, despite some good voice work. But I think this is so, it's exuberant. I love, it's, I know it's going to be terrible to say, but I mean, Kevin Spacey is a spectacular villain. Yeah. Um, his voice work is great. Everybody's is. I don't know. I just think it is, um, it's it's all the best parts of of Pixar where you set forth this massive challenge and usually by a single hero uh, <laughs> and you just go with them as they overcome it mm -hmm. both you know as an individual and with a team yes and it's it's the thing that they do better than anybody else yeah anybody this is this is very it's very Toy Story in its yeah. template. Um, yeah. but I, oh my God, I love this movie so much. Yeah. I don't have it on my list. And uh, Sophia, do you have it on yours? It's my number six. I also <laughs> love it. Yeah. It's a, I don't gosh. think it gets enough credit. It does not. I am. It it's my, it's my number so 12. Happy. Yeah. I like yeah, it well, though. Yeah. Well, that's gross. There's like, and the queen is fabulous in it. Like the queen. Six and movies. Yeah. No, Princess Anna. Movie. Yes. Yes. Dreyfus. Uh, Dave Foley. The voice work is so cool. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a long time, but a rewatch is definitely needed. I'm yeah. gonna rewatch it. Oh. oh, okay. Well, technically, you're doing a show, so do this, and then you can rewatch it. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> um, my number five is one of the their more recent films. It's the the most recent film on this list uh, for me, and that is uh, Coco. So uh, I don't even eric i saw that face um but no it's my number yeah. six. Oh, it's your number six okay um, oh no i i think coco's amazing yeah coco uh, is a really beautiful uh vibrant story i mean speaking about representation and definitely needing that in the culture is exactly you know kind of like the pixar movie i've always wanted to see um i just think that it seems very much at home for me as mexican-american and i was i was just watching it all and then think what really hit home was obviously the stuff with grandma coco and how that was at the time finding out about my own grandmother and what was happening with her and then to see that twice because both my grandmothers uh, had that happen to her it uh, to them it was a lot uh, to take in in that movie I've, I've only seen it once because i know how much it will devastate me uh every single every single time i hear that music it's it's wonderful it's beautiful. Um, it's everything um, that you would want out of a Pixar movie. And it's very imaginative and it's very funny. And, and like I said, it's very vibrant. It's just a beautiful, beautiful Pixar movie. And I know that, you know, we've had some more recent ones, like, you know, people talk about soul and they talk about uh, Luca's beautiful work last year, but I really think like peak of their new era in terms of the, the grand beauty of what they're just dumping in terms of, how a movie can look, how an animated movie can look was that movie. And so, yeah, Coco for me is, is, is it's pretty special and I uh, love that movie. So does anybody have it on their list? Anybody? I do. Tyler. It's my, what? it's my number four. Number four. Oh, okay. All right. Awesome. Yeah. I don't know what else I could say about it that you haven't already. Um, I do remember I went on a date to see this movie. It was like my first date with a guy. <laughs> And he tried to hold my hand and I was too busy wiping away tears. And you were like, get the fuck out of here. I literally was <laughs> like, I can't do this with you. Don't look at me. Don't, don't come near me right now. Let I me want any of it. This moment. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that. What a story. What a, I love that. I, I think love Coco that. does what very few Pixar movies can do. And most Pixar movies exist on a very universal level in their storytelling. And Coco exists on a universal level, but even more importantly, on a very specific 
level and yeah. they don't venture into that as much they're finally starting to obviously turning red. a little bit about light year sold us that too turning uh, red too this past year as turning well. red yeah. this this is hyper specific yeah. and if you can't watch something that isn't a part of something that you are a part of and absorb it and enjoy it you know i feel sorry for you and then you know if you are a part of it then you get to feel a part of something much bigger than yourself yeah and i and i yeah i love this movie yeah well said eric well said sophia we're at your number four so what is your yeah. number four first before i do my number four i will say i also love coco even though it's not in my top five I made the mistake wow. of watching That's this movie good. on a plane for the first time. Oh no, don't do that. No. And yeah, I was that's... sobbing. Yeah. Like, sobbing. That's the thing too, think... is it's about where you watch a Pixar movie too. Cause mm-hmm. man, the less public, the better sometimes with some of these things. That's why yeah. you need those press screenings. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> I need movies. Nobody around me, please. <laughs> yeah. Get the normies out of here. Uh, so no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But my number four is, I think when I was making my list, I had to be really true to myself and what I loved at the time, in mm-hmm. addition to what I think the impact of the individual movie is. And that's why my number four is Finding Nemo. I remember going to see this and just being blown away by how I felt the marine life was captured, just the animation underwater, the specificity of the jokes from the different types of creatures you interact with. And ultimately it's this really scary story at the beginning when you have, when everything starts, when Nemo is gone. And I love that you, I think that it's just this very rewarding journey when you get to the end and you learn a lot about family and a lot about love. And I just remember just again, that sense of awe and wonder when I saw this, when it came out. And I also have to show, I also have to shout out my co-host, Nick of my podcast, Oscar Wilde, who, when he was a little kid, printed this screenplay out at the library <laughs> and put it in a binder because he loved this movie so much. He won't be embarrassed by me bringing up That's the story the most because he's brought it up on our show, but thing yeah. Ever. That's the cutest thing I've heard like all week. Yeah. It's a special That's movie. So we need, mm-hmm. Yeah. We need more stories like that about Nick. Yeah. <laughs> I have plenty. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Anybody else have Finding Nemo on their list? Okay. I don't, I sh- but it's my number six. Uh, I should. It's my number eight. But I, and I love it's it. It's Father's Day, and this is a father son story in a way that is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, yeah. From the get go. Yeah. I, I gravitate to father son stories because it's generally, I have to find representation that is different than what i know Mm -hmm. and understand so it is yeah it's um that's why i loved elvis i hate you so much (laughs) i'm trying to like have a moment here my god (laughs) jeez no No, i mean really though it's um yeah yeah it's it should be on my list i hate having only five movies on this list it's obscene I wonder, who, I wonder who he's gonna blame for that i'm gonna blame you yeah no shit for, for you know, making us coming. make a make a, a list even a ranked list i didn't yeah. i didn't even have mine ranked until we just did this oh no you weren't I just prepared had my list and i was like hey, opposite of ranked, but i don't know how i'm gonna rank this <laughs> but no it's oh i love finding nemo and it is it's scary mm-hmm. and and it really dips back into classic disney yeah. where you need to start with a parental death to be able to kickstart your story and to really Mm. fuck these kids up yeah also continues the threat of pixar and disney not having a parental figure there and yeah like you said but in this case like for toy story it's like andy's dad in this case it's like seeing Mm -hmm. it's seeing the mom and it's also super touching and then and you understand Mm -hmm. why marlon is 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 coddling nemo in a a lot of ways but then it's it's about as much about Nemo show opening up as much well, as he's a his. groomer, so obviously. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, Tyler, you mentioned your number four. That was Coco. So, Eric, it's your number four, you bastard. Um, what is your number four? 
This is a strange choice because when I was making lists, it never would have been on my list before. Cars three. Um, no, my number four is actually Ratatouille. <gasps> yeah. But that's mostly because <laughs> I love French food and I'm also a bald villain. That's fair. So I that's really fair. connected with this story in a very- Talking about very, representation. Very, talking right, about yeah. representation. <laughs> uh, no. I, <laughs> I liked Ratatouille when it came out. I didn't love it. Uh, it has been something I I didn't. I I liked it, didn't love it. Mm. Uh, but it's it's grown on me in a just I don't know fantastic way. It's luxurious. I love food movies. I love 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 yeah. food movies. Yeah. Uh, and that's got to be a podcast on the road. Yeah. It, yeah. Food movies. Oh my god! It absolutely yeah. should be. Yeah, uh, we're gonna do that. And it's a good food movie. Oh, I don't care it's, if it's animated. It's a good food movie. Really good. And you know, who who doesn't have a moment where they take a bite of something and they are like physiologically altered in some way? So I get that. I I I feel that. Now that's actually a funny thing because, like I said, I didn't. I liked it. Didn't love it. I had a food experience. Five years Decades? ago. Oh, five yeah. years ago, where I started crying in the middle end of the meal because it was like next level extraordinary. The whole experience and and the thing was was amazing. So revisiting something like Ratatouille, I was like, oh okay, I understand in a way mm-hmm. that I didn't at the time. Yeah, oh for sure, it's a wonderful pick. It's my number two. Spoiler yeah. alert. Well, rude. We're not wow. going to talk about multiple. Huh. Anyway, fine, fine. get your ears checked. Um, anybody, anybody else have this on their list? Yeah, This is my number one. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I love Ratatouille. So in addition to everything that you said, Eric, about loving food movies, I think Ratatouille is so clever, even just the name itself and this concept of this rat wanting to be a chef and just loving something that deeply. And again, thinking of what it's like to leave home or to pursue a career that maybe people don't think that you should, or don't think will work out for you, but being able to, I don't know, really channel your dreams into something that becomes a reality, I think is really important. And I love the Anton ego character so much. Perfect villain yes sure but also like a depiction of a critic because I think what it gets at so perfectly is that sometimes critics can be surly and they can be pessimistic and they can be these people that other people hate because of their opinions but at the end of the day the reason why they have those harsh opinions sometimes is because they know what it feels like to love something on a different level right? For food or for movies or for TV or whatever it is that that critic is discussing. Sometimes they're down on something because they know what that feeling is to like have that lightning bolt hit your heart when something connects with you in that different way. And getting to see that happen to Anton Ego because of Remy is just such a beautiful moment. And I also just love everything that has to do with Paris. I'm a big Francophile, so I I love it. It's my, my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Tyler, do you have it on your list? I do not. But okay. I do love writers. It's just not yeah. on my list. Yeah. I, I love everything you said, Sophia, times a million, and everything you said to Eric. I mean, it's it's truly like one of those just perfect animated movies. I I I watch it all the time too. I mean, you, you talk about, you know, from a critic standpoint, you talk about it from a food lover standpoint, you just t- talk about it through um just this mix of wonderful kind of crazy storytelling from brad bird and about this just rat and him using this guy's head as you know his surrogate to get into culinary you know cooking and everything and and it's also just about what a lot of pixar movies are is following your passion following your dreams and everything too and i and i just absolutely love it every single time and then also that it's impact i mean shoot like there's literally a, a raccoon version of the whole thing and everything everywhere all at once this year it's <laughs> it's it is it's um uh it's it's 
one of my favorites and, and yeah love it so much so well, that was it's it. a, yeah it, it, it's it's a basically a Cyrano story it's yeah a Cyrano de Bergerac but I think something I love the most about it is that unlike some Pixar films and some Disney films the animated character and the human character are basically <clears throat> in tandem and equal throughout and that's not that common, but mm. Remy and Linguini both have parallel stories and not just, you know, one isn't just, just a sidekick. If there is, Linguini's more of the yeah. sidekick than oh, Remy is. Remy's the main is character. Really cool, but they yeah. both have, they both have their own. And they both need each other. Yeah. In, in more ways than one. It's a cool yeah. movie. Yeah. It's a cool movie. Uh, my num- screenplay too. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, so Great good. screenplay. Brad my number. My number four is Wally. Love Wally. Um, anybody? Anybody have Wally? Anybody else? Wally's my number two. Wally's your number two. Man, we're just knocking yeah. out Sophia's list. I do not have I know. Wally. Wow. <laughs> I get why I, some people don't yeah. like Wally. I'll yeah. say that it is. A, it's a different type of experience. I didn't like it when I first saw it, and then um, I rewatched it during the pandemic, like early stages. I think like April. 2020 and it just like knocked me out it's, but ryan you go it's you go so first. <laughs> elegant and i mean it's just mm-hmm. like it's a silent movie at times it is this movie about our climate and our world and where we're going and where we are actually already at and how it's doing all this unconventional love story between this robot who is trying to you know find trying to clean up this desolate earth and is collecting all these things and it's so sweet and charming and everything and then you also have to uh factor in you know it's it's a modest to you know classic hollywood cinema and musicals and um and all the great silent films and it's just one of those movies where i remember watching it i, I took my cousin to see it and she was a little, a little girl at the time and i took her to see it and it was another one of those instances where I was sobbing on the floor when I was watching. Cause it was just like, my God, they've done it again, where they just have this magic about them. We talk about Disney's magic and, and everything, but they have this, you know, some people have, have made the sort of argument that Pixar has a formula and it's trying to manipulate tears out of you. And I don't think that that is the case. I think a good Pixar movie is just about its story and its characters, its world, its setting and everything and how it all works together to make you feel something. It is about trying to evoke a reaction rather than trying to manipulate it out of you. And I think that those are two separate things. And I think Wally is a perfect example of that because this is another one of those. It's a very sweet an endearing film and then it takes you from earth to outer space and it's talking about all the problems that are, are wrong with this this is like a movie that adam mckay wishes he could make in so <laughs> many ways than, than than others but um and it's and i i just i, I think it ages <sighs> impeccably well and it's yeah i it it's one of the four films this is my first of four um between ratatouille this film and my other two films that are the five star ratings um and so yeah i love 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 this movie so sophia yeah i think in addition to what you said wally is you know thinking about the time when i watched it again too it's this story about what it means to be on this earth what it means to exist Mm -hmm. it's making you ask those questions of yourself and it's about loneliness and loss yes but it also has this great sense of hope to it and that I think is what I find really beautiful in addition this is just my favorite of like if I'm thinking just about the animation and what I'm seeing visually this is my favorite hands down it's a work of art Mm -hmm. yeah it's impeccable it's impeccable yeah no i love it i love it all right sophia i think we've talked about all your picks except your number three so what is Uh, your number three so my number three i picked because it was one that i really loved when i was little and i also think it is maybe the most groundbreaking pixar movie and that is toy story the first one Mm. 
I think that, you know, we, we have so many of these Toy Story movies. Now <laughs> we have four of them. We have Lightyear. Like this is very much like it's a property that people are interested in. And we, we will probably have more movies, but it's, it's hard, I think, to specify what makes this film so groundbreaking, but it isn't right. It was the first computer animated film mm-hmm. that we have. So yep. groundbreaking for that, but also just the concept of thinking about the toys that you have when you were a kid and what they do when you're not there. I think we all think of that um, when we're kids, but the, the fact that these adults um, were thinking about that and not only were they wanting to tell that story that they probably thought of when they were younger in the process, they were changing what animated movies were and would become. And I think that is what is really powerful about it. You can just see um, these animators, these creatives reflecting on their childhood and also determining where animated movies would go. So I had to pick Toy Story and I love the characters. I love the voice work. I think it's just fantastic. Yeah. Anybody else have Toy Story, the original on their top five? No, No, it's my number seven. It's your number seven. Okay. It is my number 11. And um, I I don't think I'd have it that low, but I have it. I I love it, but I actually, Sophia's going to get mad at me. I think that all the other three Toy Story sequels are better than the original. And, and no, but that can go with, a couple of your others. Okay. Like, Thanks. Thanks so. The Madonna biopic, mm. Mank, like put it all in that basket. I love that we were all being so nice to each other about Pixar and then nope. <laughs> no. Nope. You're in the put... trash bin, it's right? It's still a four out of villain at the end of the day. It's still a four out of five star <laughs> film for me. And I and I love it. Um it that's just it's just the other ones hit me more emotionally, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and got me. And so that's the only thing. But I still love the film. That's about um, ranking. You can rank differently depending yeah, it's, on you know, how it's you a, view every all it's of extremely it. hard to rank this, you know. For a long time, I didn't even rank the Toy Story films in my Pixar uh rankings because I was like, no, they're just separate. Like they they're their own thing. And you can do that if you want, but I was just like, no, I need to actually put them in there and and everything because uh, I mean they mean so much to uh to our generation and everything. So uh Tyler, your number three? Are we? done that one um no we haven't okay okay so my number three um is a movie that i loved when i was little Uh, i just talked to ryan this weekend about how much i love familial movies i love things about family i always have and i think that the incredibles was the first time that i got to see something like that and i got to see a family not saying my family is dysfunctional at all but i got to see a family that wasn't just presented as somebody who of group that gets along all the time and they had their troubles and they're dealing with other things. And, and on another note, as a young gay kid, I was obsessed with Violet. I thought her powers were so cool. I loved the thought of being invisible sometimes just when you need to. Um, So yeah, that's, that's my number three. Eric, do you have it on your list? I love Tyler so much. I just have to (laughs) say that. Uh, Incredibles is also my number three. Come, what are you For mad? Very, what are you... very similar reasons. It's just, it is, it is such a fascinating family dynamic movie. It also predates the Marvel and superhero mm-hmm. place that we are in now, and still does it better than pretty much all of them, including its sequel. Um, I love the sequel. I think the sequel is fantastic. This is better because it is so much more about the family dynamic. I mean, yeah. the, the sequel is too, but I think this yeah. is better. Yeah. Um, I think the the voice work that Craig T. Nelson and Holly Hunter do is next level amazing. And I mean, I have a slightly fun connection with Pixar in that I lived in the tiny, tiny town of like less than a thousand people uh, where Pixar was based when everything for the first like 10, 15 years was made. So, you know, I had lunch and breakfast with John Lasseter and Ling Unkrich and, and all of them. And they utilize 
all of the locales where we lived in all of the movies. So when you get this, like, you know, police are going down San Pablo Avenue. That was my, that was my neighborhood. Uh, they used the cafe uh, in multiple movies. So my, I just, I love the connection that I have with, with Pixar movies, but I don't know. Incredibles kind of was on a, a different level. I was not, you know, I was not a violet where I was trying to be invisible. I was the opposite of that, but I loved it and I understood it in in a subtextual way that was, yeah. yeah. I fucking loved Incredibles. Yeah. It's my number one. It is the best Pixar movie, period. And so story. Good. Yeah. I I love that movie. I remember seeing it in theaters and just it was I remember there was like a bunch of screaming kids in my theater and I just, they didn't, they didn't exist. None of them, nobody existed when that movie was on. It was, I was like in the second or third row. It's almost like, you know, that scene in, in up in the beginning, right. In the opening montage where he puts on the goggles where, you know, Carl puts on the goggles and he's watching the movie on the screen. That was me. It felt like with the Incredibles because I just, yeah, I mean, you talk about it. It was before really the superhero sort of, you know, craze it's four existed. Years before Iron Man. Exactly. And it's crazy. It's also just this really great family drama, uh, you know, too, with the, and, and it's a great action film. It's also, uh, it feels very much in the, in, you know, Brad Bird using uh, love of like spy thrillers as well, too, and conspiracy thrillers as well. And the beginning of it with, with the, um, with the superheroes and them going invisible and everything and having to, and having to hide, um, which can say a lot more also about other things. If you want to talk about that too, which I, I, I found to be really interesting as I've grown older. And I think it is tr- truly a, a great uh, just film. All the voice acting is fantastic. A wonderful villain. Um, the birth of, of one of the most adorable characters in Jack, Jack um, who is even better, just in his sections in the sequel and shut up Eric. And ultimately it's just the least like Brad- interesting part of the movie. Oh no. Those, those things are, those scenes with Jack Jack are hilarious. Um, but I, I just, and I just loved the fact that like every single one of these characters, you, you just feel like, you know, so much about them also to Samuel Jackson in, in his, in his role in the film too. I just I like everybody, like it is, Truly, for me, a perfect movie. So many superhero movies have tried to be this. You're right, Eric. And they have failed because they don't understand that you have to flesh out every character and have them feel so different and yet the same and original. And I just, I loved it. That's why, to me, the second film was such a disappointment. And I I think it was only because just of my love for the original and how much uh, I, I watched that one on a loop. So yeah, The Incredibles is is my is my favorite Pixar movie, and it doesn't look like Sophia. The sequel is like definitely before. in my top ten. I think it's amazing. Do you like it, Sophia? Or um, it's okay. I I'm not going to <laughs> because right. I know that these movies hit people really emotionally, and this one just didn't do that for me at the time. So I've never revisited it. Actually, oh, okay. um, this is one of the few that I just watched when I saw it in the theater back when I was what, 10 or 11 and mm-hmm. like that was it because it just didn't hit me at the time maybe I wasn't mm-hmm. interested in superheroes um, that could be part of it but mm-hmm. I do think that it is really well made I know the impact that it has had and I've heard so many people talk about why they love it so it, I'm definitely due for a revisit but yeah not not near my top five but that's okay yeah I, I get it. Disney I mean, Plus. two two of probably the most popular Pixar movies are really, really, really far down on my list. And I know I'm, I'm a, uh, an outlier in that, but you know, I would I in this case, especially with these kinds of movies, I would never dismiss uh, somebody's connection or affection yeah. to to them. Mm-hmm. So we've done all Sophia's top five. Tyler, I don't yeah. think we've done your number two and one, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. So you're number two, sir. So my number two, this one, until my number one was released, it was my absolute favorite Pixar movie, um, which is Monsters, Inc. Um, 
Wow. I remember, I think this movie came out when I was like 10 or 11, maybe eight. And, you know, as a young queer kid, like you maybe don't know things about yourself, but other people already do kind of know. And I found it to be so interesting to watch Sully and Mike, who are supposed to be, you know, accepted within this community and they're having so much problems because people think they're a joke. Um, and I felt like that really spoke to me, not because I thought people thought I was a joke, but, you know, they, they might know something that you don't about yourself. So that movie, I think it's funny. I think it is heartwarming. I love the aspect of found family when they have boo. And I mean, how can you get better than John Goodman and Billy Crystal as the two main people So good. With, so Steve, good. with Steve Buscemi playing the antagonist? Like it cannot get better than that. I love that movie so much. Eric, it's on your list, I would assume. The way it's you not. It's not? No. It's not, but I'm listening to Tyler and... You're like, it should be. It should... For yeah, all the reasons that Tyler is is picking the, the, the movies that he is, I'm, I'm just listening and I'm in... It makes me emotional. Mm. It yeah. really does. I, wait till you hear my number one. <laughs> yeah, well, wait till you hear mine. Oh, my God. So I, I just... <laughs> I think it's um it just speaks to to the strength of how these movies can tell their stories on a subtextual level and you know when you're when you are watching a movie through an LGBTQ lens and you are you are looking at subtext because you've always had to look at subtext I, I think it's, I just think it's a mark of an incredibly successful piece of storytelling. So, yeah. No, yeah. It's a fantastic, fantastic film for sure. Eric, you're number two. <laughs> um, my, <laughs> my number two and my number one are very emotional, like gut level stories, but in different ways and my number two i don't know is my obvious favorite of this franchise for a lot of reasons for the introduction of my favorite new character in this franchise and a song that will always like send me off the deep end and that's Toy Story 2. It's my number two as well, Eric. Because I, 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 Joan Cusack should have not only like five fucking Oscar nominations, she yeah. should have an honorary and at least like two wins. This is, you know, you can, you can finding Dory all your, all you want, but um, no. What Joan Cusack does here is yeah. not in the same realm it is she's she's already an extremely animated person so putting her in this realm is so perfect and she's oh, she's amazing and i when she loved me in a year of great songs so many great songs and in a year 1999 of amazing movies still the best year of movies in the last like 40 years um yeah even even if the rest of the movie was lousy which it's not no. what joan cusack does what that song does I mean, that's like Sarah McLaughlin singing about like homeless dogs level. It's like, are you feeling this? Oh, you're not. How about now? Yeah, no, it's I, I can, I can. Yeah. Tyler, is it on your, it, it's not your number one, is it? It's not, but I will say I still cannot listen to when she loved me without being no. totally eviscerated no. by that song. That no. was it was like one of those times as a kid where I was like, oh my gosh, am I crying during a movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sophia, that would be, it would make it your number three in the, in the series because it, it would, would, but just how I based my, just how I did my ranking and weighing just importance of the movies, just 
to myself at the time watching them and just cultural yeah. impact. Yeah. But I love Toy Story 2. I think it's a perfect sequel. And yeah. hearing you guys talk about it, I mean, it makes me want to move it up in my rankings. It probably should be in my top five. But yeah, I guess it would be my third if I'm thinking of my rankings that way. But I mean, it's not, that doesn't mean it's bad. They're all good, mm. except for four to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not my number three. It's actually my number two. Sorry. Or, or it's not my number two. It's actually my number three. I'm sorry. I mixed it all up. But uh, I will I will echo everything that Eric said. I mean, that sequence is, it rivals some of the most heartbreaking, beautiful moments in all of cinema for me. And I know everybody gets very emotional about Up!, in the beginning of up and i'm like uh have, do you remember when you cried when you saw what they did to jesse you cold-hearted sons of bitches i mean like it's it's from being in a place of when i saw it and being an only child and this idea of like if if being at this place of the fact that you could be in such a lonely vulnerable place and no one's going to be there to play with you or to have any sort of connection with it just always devastates me. And I also just love the, the introduction of <laughs> Woody's origin story and, and all that, and that, that great stuff too, because like I would watch uh, old Western serials with my grandfather. And so uh, there was that. And then of course, all the, the new toys and the stuff with like Zerg and, and buzz and all that stuff's really funny and, and everything. But yeah, it's, it's, it's Jesse, it's bullseye too, who's adorable. And I love him and Kelsey grammar being exactly who he is now a villain. And, <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's also like 90 minutes, right? It's, it's like 92 minutes. It's, it goes by so quickly, but it's so beautiful and and yeah i i love it i love that movie so and oh, yeah that fucking song almost made that song I'm, i mean and again in a year of amazing songs amazing songs uh and then like the worst one wins the oscar is that the one where um is that phil collins yeah no oh, shit i i yeah it'll be in my heart yeah fucking anyway. horrible well, if it, if if Sarah McLaughlin wasn't going to win for that, or you know, then it should have been South Park because that performance. There's South is Park. Like, there's Amy Mann. I mean, then, yeah, was, it's it's a really great year. It's a great and year, the and then the won. worst song won. So yeah. <laughs> happens way more than you think. All right, number ones, Tyler, your number one. Okay, so like I said before, um, I had Sir Zink at my num- in my number one spot for a long time until I saw this movie. Um, this movie is very special to me for a lot of different reasons, but when I was, I'm not going to get too specific on this podcast because I will get emotional about it. Um, but when I was about 20 or 21, I received a mental health diagnosis that was very hard for me to deal with. Um, and it makes my emotions extremely hard to regulate. Um, so when I saw inside out in a theater, I was totally blown away by it. Um, Riley's entire being trying to figure out how to balance her emotions and how that's healthy for her and just what it says about all the different kinds of emotions and how they can be expressed should be expressed it doesn't it doesn't feel preachy at all it just feels like something really organic that allows not only children but like I was I was grown by the time I saw it I was like I said 20 or 21 and it just totally revamped how I thought about myself of how I thought about my mental health And it truly kind of led me down a path of finding more media that really helped me along the way. Um, It wasn't the first time I was felt seen during something that came a little later that just happened a couple years ago um, with a totally different TV show, but it was something that meant a lot to me because just about its message and everything about it. Yeah. It's, it's a great movie. Mm. Great movie. Um, And, Eric, is it your number one too, or is it something? It is not something it else. Is not. Yeah, but no, I oh, that movie gets me freaking bing bong um, every time. My God, which are kind. It's great before Amy Amy Poehler, the whole the whole cast. Just it's yeah, 
it's a it's whoo it's a very good movie um i love love inside out and i think the most powerful thing about inside out is that if i ever have children this if i could only pick one pixar movie to show them it would be this one because i do think of just how important it is to for kids to know about mental yeah. health and your emotions and that it's okay to yeah. feel certain types of ways like that is that is fine and you need to like let those feelings out so i feel like this really was not only so beautifully done but just so important and again like you said tyler not in a preachy way Mm -hmm. especially now because there weren't these kinds of stories before Mm -hmm. eric last pick goes to you you get the last word on all this so it's your number one pixar film obviously it's cars (laughs) 2 um (laughs) what happens to mater stays with mater um (laughs) um this is this is a (laughs) this is a surprising pick because it's very new i have also watched it i think five times i also i don't have too much of a problem releasing and revealing like so many emotions about how I feel about things. Um, And I am, I am 50 years old. I am well, 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 well past uh, crushes and first loves and affection much less coming out. But when I see stories that embody that, I gravitate to them and I take them in personally and so emotionally. And when I saw Luca, I felt different than I ever have in my whole life. And a lot is Dan Romer's amazing score because, oh Oof. my God, I will, I can, I can cry to a good score more than anything else. And, and he's really, really good at that. I, I don't know. I just felt, um, it's not specifically a gay movie. It's not specifically a coming out movie. It is a universal and specific movie. It's what you need it to be. It's what you want it to be. Um, but I don't know. That's all I can say really right now. I remember writing the review last year with you and talking back and forth with you, Eric, and just how much we were on the floor when we were, when we were, we got to see that a little bit ahead of its release. And that is a movie that sneaks up on you in terms of its emotion. And I think that by the end, when that score swells up and it's that final moment on the train station, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it really goddamn good. And it's such a beautiful movie. And it's like I said earlier, it's, it's, it's simplistic. To a lot of the other films that we've talked about before but yet it's so well executed and it's it feels so personal and it doesn't have to be about a s- specific topic it doesn't have to be about a coming out story but it feels like it in the best way without either a being preachy or b forgetting about that it's trying to be that and i think it's i think it's a beautiful beautiful movie and yes that score my god that fucking score is so good i swear to god oh so good between like the hours far from heaven and luca give me like a farewell train station moment and i (laughs) i'm living for all of it for every single bit of it so yeah no i was (laughs) i was supposed to interview dan romer and i like i still haven't yet because i don't know i don't even know how to i don't 
No. Because between that and Beasts of Southern Wild, there is nobody that understands and feels childhood the way that he does and uses the same themes, which is really, really smart because it just kind of makes you keep connecting. Yeah. Oh my God. Beautiful, beautiful movie. But yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the trains, the train station scene, yes. Mm-hmm. But even more for me is the bike scene. Yes. On the hill. Yeah. When he's willing to show himself. Oh my God. Yeah. It's too much. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's too much. It's so much. Yeah. Imagine, I don't know, being a kid that gets to see that on a metaphorical level. I, I don't know what that's like. Yeah, it's the it, it's it's the power of Pixar. It's what it really, really just boils down to it. That's what these movies do to us. Okay, that's our top five Pixar movies. Um, we're all like we just watched the Pixar movie. We're all in a puddle right now. But it but ridiculous. It's, it's I hate it's, you so much, Ryan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Eric. I love you. I love you, Eric. <laughs> um, really bearing it all today. Yeah, we're really. Oh. Just, what an episode. Um, we're going to do a couple things real quick and then we're going to get out of here. So uh, we're going to do some listener questions. No, let's everything. absolutely like change gears. I, yes. I want to change yes. gears. We're, we're doing some listener questions. And so uh, Matthew St. Clair, which it is Matthew's birthday today. Yes, it uh, is. I'm going to tell you that we are recording this. So happy birthday, Matthew. Uh, he asks, uh, assuming Chacha Real Smooth gets an Oscar push, where do you sense Dakota Johnson could be campaigned? Do you see her in lead or supporting? Who wants to take it first? Ready? Well, I haven't seen it, so obviously not. So, me. so obviously the definitive take is Tyler, and uh, basically, you know, I think she'll it, be pushed in supporting. Yeah, I, that's what I think. I, I think so too, but I mean from what they have later on it's it's most likely going to be supporting pushes for their women contenders anyway yeah so to be perfectly honest it will not matter yeah i think i think it's like her in the screenplay you know unless something With the golden globes maybe yeah if they exist um I well mean, she'll be she'll be choice. in lead it'll be more critics choice well she, if it's golden globe they, she'll be they lead. have like 85 categories well, if it's golden globe she'll be leading the comedy that's the yeah that's yeah 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 that's the exactly case. so sophia you agree oh yeah i think supporting makes sense and considering she hasn't really had an awards big awards campaign or push before i think supporting makes sense for her when the role can be considered somewhat cuspy for where it mm-hmm. goes. I could see lead, sure, but supporting makes more sense for the studio distributor. Kenny asks, it might be too early to ask about this, but what are the chances RRR gets a few Oscar nominations for international feature film and maybe techs? Would a more global academy recognize it? I don't think that that movie is going to get. No. Sadly, any love? Um, no. Even though it's a phenomenon. Um, it's it's the, it, 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 I, I don't think it will happen the problem is that it's on Netflix and everybody has seen it because of Netflix but it's not a Netflix distributed film so they're not the ones that would be pushing it no. it's not going to be submitted by India no uh, and so yeah I, I think it would be sadly it's not not gonna happen it's a great no. story it's a great story um, and it's a well. Pretty, here, it's a pretty good thing. movie. I, I don't want to say, and especially in June, I don't yeah. want to say no to almost anything. Yes, he does. I don't want to. No, I don't. I don't. I don't want to do that. And I want to be like that. And I don't want it to bite me in the ass. Put your either. foot down now. No. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm just I want kidding. To be able to be open to things. If I'm not open to things, then Coda wins. God damn it! All right. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen, but I mean, we've seen yeah. crazier things happen before. So, um, <laughs> Sophia. Oh, I actually haven't seen this movie, so I cannot <laughs> comment on it. That's fair. It is three if hours long. If you're so. if, not just that, but if you're yeah. going to have a wild, wacky, over edited movie, then it's going to be everything everywhere. It's not going to be RRR. 
That's true. That's true. Um, last question. Kinsey wants to know what movies, actor, directors do you think uh, when you think about each other? Like what, when you first think of Eric or Sophia or Tyler or myself, uh, who are the actors, directors, movies? I know this for a fact. Sophia, it's it's Paul Thomas Anderson, Daniel Day-Lewis and Robert Altman. Uh, yeah, I didn't read this question that way at all. I thought she was asking about actor director pairs that we like. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. So, I'm changing mind. it. Sorry, Kinsey. It might it may have been that, but um, no. <laughs> Think of for each other. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I for Eric, like it's this question because that means I have to know you on a personal and emotional level. Well, he wants to know Tyler and, and Sophia, but not I don't me. know what Tyler likes. Uh, well, he just said his top five Pixar movies, so that's a start. Um, Tyler, hmm. Is it, hmm. this is tough. Kenzie's like coming in with like, like, she's a, coming in with a great question. It's thank a great God question. there's only three. Uh, well, Goodness. obviously, Eric, it's Madonna and <laughs> Lady Gaga. She is my favorite director. So um, if you yeah, haven't seen you WE, I'm Don't. sorry for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because half um, that movie is actually a masterpiece. Well, I mean, there is a certain director that I think of when I think about Eric. Um, it, it's Barry Jenkins. Um, oh my gosh. And um, actresses. I think oh. of just actresses in general when I think of Eric. I mean, I mean come on. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not. I don't Julianne mind. Moore. Yeah. Julianne Moore, Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Kidman. Those, those mm-hmm. are yeah. my, those are my queens. Yeah, for sure. Everybody knows that. What do we all think about Tyler? Yeah, well, Tyler, I know that we share two favorite movies, Gone Girl and Phantom Thread. So I love that for us. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Phantom Thread is one of my favorites, and Gone Girl is the best romantic comedy that's pretty much ever come out. Thank oh you. my God, you and Anne Hathaway. <laughs> yes, I think so. You, you and I both, but I think you specifically like you like relationship dramas where yeah, the woman dramas. takes the upper hand, which I also love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about anything like a relationship. I am sitting down, no thoughts, just vibing to the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler and I talked about this. The other... we also like it when, you know, the women, and I mean we as the gays, when the women not only take control but you know, kill the men. We yeah. like that. <laughs> we yeah. like it. Yeah. That gives me someone to root for. <laughs> Thank you. We feel men seen. Are, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. He also loves Carol. I do love uh, Carol. Yeah. Oh, who? I do I'm too. sorry. Do you not? No, I I like Carol. Okay, because okay. Carol's a man. Who, who doesn't love Carol? <laughs> Kate Blanchett is one of my queens. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you go. but she's still she's still not my top queen. If anyone could guess who that is, can um, I have a hint? Rooney Mara. I don't know. It's not Rooney Mara. This is a game I want to play. Amy. Yeah, Adams. let's play this game. It's Amy Adams. Yeah. Mm. Oh no, that's right. It's right in his bio. Yeah, I know how to read. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Were you? Are you? Just, I mean, obviously, I shouldn't bring it up, but I will. But Tyler, you're still angry about Arrival, aren't you? And the snub and everything. Yes, um, okay. we could talk about this for the next thirty minutes, but, yeah, but we won't. Bio. But we won't. <laughs> we won't. But I will say that that is one of the all-time greatest snubs. Um, yeah. I've seen pretty much everything she's been in, even down to like the Office episodes that she's in. I've rewatched. She's that. great she's in the her. Office for the reason that she's in the Office, mm-hmm. right? She's so oh, yeah. good. I'm still not over her not winning for Sharp Objects either. Oh, oh yes, that I, shows. I'm so not over her agree. losing the Oscar for Junebug. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, what What about me? What do you guys think? I think of James uh, Cameron when I think of you. Obviously, <laughs> James Cameron. Yeah. I think we we're all thinking the same thing. God damn so it. yay that we were all vibing in the same place mm-hmm. at the same Could time. We, I don't know. Be which means serious. we're all right. Um, God damn it. Um, I also think for you, Ryan. I know we agree on pta mm-hmm. i also think of tarantino for you yeah that is somebody that and i think of christopher nolan which i don't even know if that's right i mean i like his movies but i'm not like a nolan stain i know you're not but i just like i i don't know why i imagine you to that's like because i movies. like tenants <laughs> yeah it's, it's that's because ryan why. has the persona of a film bro 
No, I have no, multitudes, yeah, damn it. Named. He exudes the odor of a film bro. Not even like that's not even like my favorite. Well, besides Paul Thomas Anderson, you just sent me a tenant gif. I right, did like before I the did. show. You're talking so about balance and bringing it all would, together. I would yeah. say Spike Lee for you too. Yes. Yeah. I would also Spike. say Martin Scorsese. Yes. I like flipped out the other day on a Twitter space because somebody took the filmography of James Cameron over Martin Scorsese to eliminate, and I almost wanted to fucking. Oh my! I, yeah, wow. It was what very was that angry. Been like, uh, like fire and brimstone. Like that's how I felt. It was awful. Um, it seems yeah. so extreme. It was, but then all, I don't know. Um, yeah, I guess so. I got any actors for me? Anyone? No. No. This Nicholas Cage. Yeah, well, well, that's just that's just a given. I mean, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I love like, I mean, Sophie and I, we love Leo and Daniel Day Lewis, and um, yeah, there's, there's yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that I love. You know, I will say some of my actresses. You guys could probably guess who they are that I would like take a bullet for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Clearly key, for- the key for my actresses is I have no interest in anyone under 40 at all. Wow. Yeah. Sophia is basically a gay man. I'm just going <laughs> to say it because that's what's happening here. Well, obviously Eric is, is uh Kristen Stewart because like, you know, she gave like the greatest performance of all time last year, you know, it's on the poster and everything. Oh my so. God. I, I found out <laughs> who it was that was mocking me for that at a party in Telluride. Oh yeah. Yes. But I'm yeah. not going to say it here. Yeah. We'll say it off air. I'll say um, it off air. air. Yeah. And then we'll say it next week when he's not here. Um, But anyway, yeah. That is uh, it for listener questions. And we're going to play a quick game real quick. And then I we're going to still here. doing the game. Yeah, we we're doing a game. It's like we're running long. Because All right. Today. Yeah, it's been two hours. We could actually skip the game. Nope. Yeah. It's a fun game. It's a fun Let's game. Play next time. <sighs> Guys. Come on. They still need the, the listeners still need the calm down after we were all crying. during Yeah. Our mix yeah a, a fun game will help them out. Um, so the new game is it doesn't have like a great title right now, but it is a game called uh, that I just titled randomly called part of the ensemble. And so it is a SAG ensemble game. And so I'm going to read off names from the SAG ensembles. You're not going to know which and film it is until you know obviously you you know figure out the actors based off of it and the first person to say their name that i hear they can then get a guess and then they get a point does that make sense so Wait, say what name your name like so you like say I eric say, I have to so, say my own name yeah call yourself by your own name it's weird. and and everything can i just be like buzz buzz bitch you can do that if you want like hit, yeah hit the all right buzzer. for eric it's buzz buzz bitch buzz um, buzz bitch. bitch yeah that's what they should have said in light year right um, anyway, um, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just the first one to buzz in and give me their guess and so uh, it's not gay. It's fun. Um, so, or it's fun. I guess. It, yeah. Either way. All right. Are you guys ready? Sure. Sure. Are these real quick. Are these all specifically film ensembles? Yes. Okay. I'm so sorry, Tyler. It's okay. I've, I still watch movies sometimes. <laughs> It's not like he's hasn't watched um, movies before. Okay. David Thewlis. Emily Watson. Simon McBurney. Charlie Cox. Oh my God. Felicity Jones. Eddie Redmayne. Oh, buzz, oh, buzz. Me. No, Eric was first. Theory of everything. That is correct. Jesus, it doesn't forgot, have to win. It's oh, just I, one of the nominees. I forgot like three of the things. Oh, yeah. me too. I kind of forgot what we were doing in the middle yeah. of that. <laughs> okay. I'm naming right. the least known I th- I actors. I thought we were going to go longer like the, the cast yeah. of Bobby. Well, maybe. You which is know. like 20 people. Never know. All right. Adrian Brody. Kathy Bates. 
Buzz. Eric. Midnight in Paris. That is correct. Damn, that was a good one. That was a good one. Are you ready? Okay. Luis Guzman. Jeremy Blackman. Alfred Molina. Buzz. Oh, me, me, me. Eric. I said Eric. ooh first. No. <laughs> I no that I made a noise. Give first. it to Sophia. All right, Sophia. <laughs> Magnolia. That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. I should have had it at fucking Jeremy. <laughs> He's the only one in the god damn it. All right. Jeremy Irons. Jack Houston. Selma Hayek. Al Pacino. Adam oh, Driver. Yeah, 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 oh, Buzz. Uh, <laughs> fucking House of Gucci. <laughs> Jesus. Buzz. How I keep saying happen? Buzz. 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 Me, buzz, buzz. 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 Like you know the rest. Of buzz, the boy. Buzz. <laughs> Mary Kay Place. Orson Bean. Charlie Sheen. Uh, me. Okay. Being yes. John Malkovich. That is correct. Oh my God, you're so quick. <laughs> That's correct. Dan Futterman. Me. The birdcage. That is correct. Jesus. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Ray Winston. Anthony Anderson. Alec Baldwin. Vera oh, Farmiga. Buzz, buzz. That is the departed, the departed. Yep, that is correct. <laughs> All right, a couple more, a couple more. See, it's not bad. It's fun, right? Mm-hmm. It's fun. I kind of like this. Yeah. See, it's not that bad. It's not terrifying. It's it's mm-hmm. a lot better than the other games, and not just because I I'm getting, but it just yeah, it's because you're winning. It's, Shut it's, up. The, no, the reveal is more fun because mm-hmm. yeah, no, this is more fun. Yeah. See, I know what I'm doing. Uh, Alan Leach, Matthew Beard, Rory Kinnear. Oh, I'm sorry, Eric. Was that a buzz? No. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to answer it then? No? Okay. Yes, I want to answer buzz, it. Buzz, buzz. I okay. want to answer it. You can go first, yeah. <laughs> Downton nope. Abbey. Nope, that is incorrect. Buzz. Oh. Yes, Sophia. The imitation game. That is correct. Oh. oh. Good one. Yes. Well done. Charles Dance, Keira Knightley, Mark Strong, and of course, Honor, Honor the Man, Honor the Movie, Benedict Cumberbatch. Michael Keaton. Buzz. Sophia, which one? Ooh. Spotlight. That is correct. Damn it. (laughs) Bitch, there's only like four people in that. (laughs) No, there's not. Because it was uh, Brian Brian D.R.C. James, Billy Crudup, Rachel McAdams, Mark Ruffalo, Leo Shriver. That was a good guess, Sophia. That was risky. And the Twitch. I, when I was when I said Buzz, I was going to say Birdman, and then I was like, no, no, that's wrong. It's yeah, to do him f- uh, first. Oh, that was right. my first thought too. Was Birdman, but then I was like, he wouldn't be first. Mm-hmm. Alan Tunick, Dallas Roberts, Peter Fonda, oh. Vanessa Shaw. Oh, oh, Buzz. Okay. Oh, wait. Can I retract the buzz and wait for more? Is that I will okay? allow it one time. Okay. Yeah. One time. Okay. Gretchen Mole. Logan Lerman. Ben Foster. Buzz? Yes. 310 to Yuma? That is correct. Oh, yes. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. That's such a crazy nomination. It is, right? 
All right, da, 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 da. let's see here. Let's see here. Stalin Sarsgaard. Mini driver. Oh, Buzz. Okay. <laughs> Goodwill hunting. That is correct. Yeah. Sophia beating my ass right now. Yeah. I thought I was doing so well. You were. You I were. just got oh, the hang of it. <laughs> I love it. We'll do two more. I would like Tyler to get one. Yeah, just for the listeners. I am still here. I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have not left. All right. Let's see. Hmm. Trying to get a good one here. Oh, you All don't right. even have a list. You're just like doing it yeah. on the fly. Yep. That's how I roll. This bitch. Keeps it random. Does it? Connie Britton. Allison Janney, Malcolm McDowell. Uh, wait, what? What? Kate McKinnon. Oh, Buzz. Mm. Bombshell. That is correct. Damn it! Oh, I forgot Kate McKinnon was in that. Yeah, yeah. I did too. That was really good in it. For me. Yeah, yeah. All right. Jonathan Banks, Rob Morgan, Jason Mitchell, Jason Clark. Buzz? Yes. Straight out of Compton? No. Mary J. Blige. Buzz. Mudbound. That is correct. (laughs) (laughs) Just one more. All right. We will do one more and that is it. And then we will have to call it quits today. Okay. Tyler, I'm looking for I'm looking for your right here. Right here. Right here. I'm ready. All right. All right. I'm listening. I'm focused. Okay. Miranda Otto. John Noble. Buzz. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lord of the Rings. Uh huh. Full title, um, though. Full title. Return of the King. That is correct. That is correct. Ooh. That was correct. Did you guys like that? That was, that was actually super fun. Right? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. We will I do. A lot. We will do television <laughs> next. <laughs> we will do Sorry, television definitely. next time. Because we can y'all do will... TV for SAG and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. we can. Hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, Ryan, great idea. Anyway, um, that'll do it for this week's. Well, wait, who won? Did Sophia win? Because I think Sophia won. I'm just going to give it to Sophia, not to you. That's fine. Uh, no, I need numbers. Who won? Oh, I wasn't Actually. keeping track. What? No. What? I just want right, to have fun. We're going to have to dial back that audio, but I think <laughs> Sophia won. She I actually, think she did win. She killed it right there. The yeah, there was a up. large Thank section you. where you weren't saying anything here. So yeah, I, I was, was I was blind. I knew I had to step it up. I think Bombshell <laughs> wanted for her. So yeah, she's I more than Julianne yikes. Moore. No yeah. one wants no to. She's, yeah, she's, she's the more Nicole Kidman staying on this podcast than you are. That was awesome. <laughs> that that yeah. was actually pretty fun. You're welcome. All right. Anyway, Tyler, can you tell everyone where they can find you on the internet? Yes, you can find me at on Twitter at Tyler M. Doster. Um, I post all of my stuff on there, all my reviews, all my interviews, and all of those can also be found at awardswatch.com. Tyler has been killing it. So many interviews, so many predictions. We're in the middle of Emmy season. So if you want to, if you're a big fan of all things TV, follow Tyler, please, 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 please. He should have like 7 million followers right now ridiculous uh sophia where can we find you on the internet first i will say definitely follow tyler because i've been watching so much more tv like barry i started that because oh, so good. i've been following tyler's emmy coverage um, but you can find me on twitter at sophia underscore sim cim and my podcast oscar wild at oscar wild pod we have our first Oscar predictions episode coming this Thursday, which is going to be very funny. Nick and I had a very good time recording that and laughed a lot. So get ready for that. That is like a must listen for me this week. <laughs> I can't listen. wait. Along with every other episode of Oscar. Did he Wild. record that from Fire Island? <laughs> no, we recorded it before he went to Fire Island. Okay, good. Yeah. Was... That would have been <laughs> an <right>. interesting show <laughs> um, in That the would be kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> 
have the raw audio right anyway um eric can you tell everyone where they can find you on the internet yes you can but first i want to make sure that anybody that's in new york city knows that madonna is playing pride uh next week which is coinciding with the (sighs) abridged edition uh remix album finally enough love which is coming june 24th but the full 50 track edition is coming august 19th to coincide with her birthday because she's a legend and we should do an entire podcast this will be entirely out of the show on that uh it's kind of a big deal she's reuniting with warner after almost 40 years and it will cover 40 years of her career so where you can find me is at awardswatch.com and on twitter at awards underscore watch where you will see a lovely madonna and julia garner banner on my main page Eric's been doing a lot of great work uh, and you can read it on the website. <laughs> no. Yes. Yeah. We do yes, actually have yes, a lot. We, we, yes. we have been uh, invaded with an enormous amount of fantastic uh, Emmy coverage with yeah. everybody's been doing great job interviews, tons of interviews. We have yeah. so many more coming next week. Mandy Moore, Sydney Sweeney. I'm talking to Sophia tomorrow. did an interview. Did. recently too yeah. and Sophia yeah. Yeah. she did that Molly Smith Metzler interview was fantastic fantastic I, thank and you this is this is the first yeah it is this is the first uh uh piece that Sophia has uh had for awards watch and I'm I'm so excited for so much more because clearly when you read the interview the the symbiosis between uh, you and Molly was there. And I think that is just speaks to being able to attach the right person with the right person for an interview and for a conversation. And it was yeah. wonderful. It was oh, fan- thank you. Yep. Yeah, yep. she was lovely. I had a great, great time talking to her. It was fantastic. Fantastic work, Sophia. And everybody all around. Just great. Great work. Everybody pat themselves on the back. Yes, um, Tyler Chu, and he's got the the interview with uh, how much steel coming. I guess it would be today if you're listening mm-hmm. to this today. Yeah, uh, you can find me on um, Twitter and Instagram and Letterbox at Ryan McQuaid seventy seven. You can find all my work here at Awards Watch, doing all the stuff here and other places as well. We'll be back next week. We'll be doing something. I don't know what we're going to be doing. We'll be doing something. We'll be playing some games. I know. Just to tease our listeners down the road, we will be doing a massive trivia amongst everybody. And I am putting that together slowly but surely. And it will be a massive um, trivia competition. And uh, we'll, we'll see who is the, the best at uh, movie, Oscar, television trivia, put it all together. And uh, we'll see how that goes. But until then, we'll see you all next time.